You are listening to the INCJ podcast, conversations about international criminal justice. Welcome to number one in a series called the COVID Practitioner Challenge. I'm John Scott, and this is an INCJ podcast and YouTube. Now, all around the world, COVID-19 has presented a unique challenge over the last year to frontline services, not just in the health and social sector, but in criminal justice sector too. At INCJ, we wanted to find out how people working in frontline services, whether it be in prisons or probation, police or with victims, internationally, how they were handling the issues around COVID-19. So we started a conversation with criminal justice workers to ask about their experience of the crisis. Our hope is that by sharing their answers, we'll find solutions and fresh ideas and highlight how practice will be changed in the longer term. Now, if you want to follow this series, you'll find it on our website at criminaljusticenetwork.net or on Twitter at INTCJ Network. Let me introduce Mika Merlsa, who is a senior criminal sanctions official in Finland, and he works at an open prison. Uh, welcome, Mika. Uh, we'd like to tell us where you're based. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, I'm based in Helsinki, our capital. Okay. Now, are you working at home today or are you at, at work? At work, at work. Right. Now then, tell us about your prison. How big is it? Well, if you compare it to like on international standards, it's not big at all. So we have only uh, 80 places currently. Uh -huh. At normal situation, we would have uh, 90 places. But now, because of the corona, we have only 80 places. Mm -hmm. And what type of, 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 of prisoners do you have? Uh, all sorts of prisoners. So we have everything between you know, short-term people to lifers, so everything in between. And what's your current job in the prison? Uh, well, I'm the senior criminal sanctions official, and uh, my I'm more of a security uh, guy, so what I'm doing is I'm handling all sort of issues concerning security in our prison, which, well, the, the stuff I do is quite uh, quite vast, the area that I need to be handling. Yeah. And do you work with a team of other staff? Well, yeah. Well, we have a team that consists of uh, social workers and senior criminal sanctions officials. And of course, then I have uh, a team of prison officers that work sort of for me. <clears throat> okay, so y you um, have to manage what they do and make sure that everybody's in on time and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's it's just, you know, normal prison stuff. Just Well, yeah. what's normal for you might not be normal for other people. So tell, yeah. us, tell us about the shape of your day. Well, in short, it's it's so that I come to my office. Then twelve hour late, 12, twelve hours later, I leave my office. So it's mainly on sitting in front of computer and writing all sort of like. Well, I'm not sure if statement is the right word, but all sort of documents and of course meeting meeting with prisoners as well. But uh, it's at. Uh, most of the time, it's quite lonely work, and uh, yeah. So, so, what sort of engagement do you have with prisoners when you say you meet with prisoners? What topics do you have to discuss with them? Uh, well, in our prison, we have the system that uh, each worker has their own responsibilities when it comes to uh, prisoners. So, I have, uh, I think, currently, I have six prisoners and 
ideal everything that concerns those prisoners. So whether they are applying for a prison leave or applying a study permission or whatever the issue is, uh, I, I deal with it with those six prisoners. So of course, uh, you know, I call these my own prisoners. Mm -hmm. So whatever they have in their mind, I'll, you know, I just chat with them and so on. But then, then of course, if there are some, you know, misconduct or since I'm the head of head of security, uh, if there is some, you know, commotion happening or some misconduct or breaking the rules or whatever, I'm the one who deals with those issues as well. So I'm the one who hears them about it and makes the investigation and so on. Mm. What's been the main impact of? COVID-19 on the lives of prisoners over the past year, would you say? Uh, it might sound a bit uh, dumb, but in our environment, it, it is the restriction of freedom, since in an open prison, not in normal situation, you would be able to have a prison leave and, uh, you know, meet with your family, have uh, prison meetings and so on. So during this year, we have had times, for example, right now, we don't, uh, of course, there are, there are also always, you know, different, different things and reasons why someone is, someone is given a prison leave. But right now, we don't mainly give prison leaves to a, anyone, except if, whenever, whenever there is a good reason for it, then it is possible. But right now... It's not possible. And has that meant that the prisoners have been uh, more frustrated and felt more uh, uh, captured and less able to relate to their families and that sort of thing? Yes, 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 of course. Uh, the, and currently we have, haven't had like a normal situation with the prison leaves for like, I don't know, two or three months, so they haven't been able to meet with their families at all. So, of course, that frustrates most of the people. Yeah. And has that led to more discipline problems, do you think? Uh, in a way, in a way it has, because normally in a normal situation when they have prison leaves and, you know, there is some problem, if they have like a problem between themselves, like two prisoners have problem in here, or if they are, you know, starting to use drugs or so on, they just don't return from the prison leave. So they just don't come back and uh, that doesn't cause any troubles in here. But now the situation is that uh, drugs are more often used in in prison environment and they and that's of course that affects the whole environment and the whole situation in the prison itself so in a way uh the tensions between prisoners are heightened uh, yeah less chance of of them uh having breaks, whether maybe to go to uh, work outside or maybe to go to a family uh, event like a funeral or something like that. So is life in prison more intense, do you think, at the minute? I think it is, even though, of course, I'm not the one to decide whether it is intense at all, but in an open, in an open prison, the environment is more relaxed than in closed prison, of course. So if you compare the tension between open prison and closed prison, it is different even now during Corona. But I have sensed, I have sensed and heard that people are, people are quite, well, I'm not sure if agitated is the best word, but yeah. More on edge, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I can understand that. Uh, have you had to make changes to the way you work because of COVID-19? Well, 
you know, obvious obvious uh, changes have been using face mask. Normally, we have to, like, of course, I don't use it now when I'm alone in my own room, but normally we we have to use them at all times. And uh, other kind of, you know, these prison restrictions that we have had. But in a personal way, it has... Well, not personal way, but in an organizational way, the techno technological leap we have had to make because of COVID has been huge. So, well, good example is that when last year, when this whole situation started, like we didn't have enough webcams in our prison. And then when you had to order webcams to people so that we can make, you know, meetings without seeing each other, the, the trouble was huge because we weren't able to get those. So the technological leap has been huge. So uh, technology has been introduced and that's been a, yeah. a, a big challenge. Uh, have there been any other challenges to you? Hmm. No, I wouldn't say because... From my point of view, the work still stays the same. Of course, there is more tension. There might be different kind of more troubles and different kind of troubles happening in the prison. But in a way, the work still the work's the same. And so you're relying on what your relationship skills to keep things calm? Yeah, yeah. It's the main issue is that we know our prisoners. Okay. And we have good relationship with them. We try to have a good relationship with each one of them. So that helps us. And you said earlier about how you have uh, specific prisoners that you have a key relationship with. And that's all the staff have key uh, prisoners that they work with. And do you discuss, uh, do you meet as a team to discuss how particular prisoners are behaving yeah well we have a weekly meeting and if there is anything that uh if i want to you know discuss about something or someone's case then we will talk it with everyone because of course i have a different uh, you know my professional background is different than to some of our social workers and so on so then we have like uh, multiple views on how we should now deal with this this certain issue okay that's helpful so what worries have prisoners brought to you or to the team about the impact of covid on them uh well i think the main main issue has been the family issues you know normally if you have a like a family emergency thing or you know problems with your girlfriend or something like that uh, we might, you know, grant you a prison leave to make things right or whatever the issue is. But now you're only able to contact them with the phone in most cases. So obviously the family issue is probably the, you know, the biggest thing in prisoners' life. Yeah. Have they been frightened of catching the virus themselves? Uh, we have, well, I can't talk, you know, I only know the, those six guys that I have that well, that like some of, some of them might have, might have, have some, you know, issues, but I think most, most, uh, prisoners or most people in general are, a bit selfish so you know if you have the if you have to think about whether you're having a prison leave or or you know catching corona you know you always want the prison leave of course so it's hard to say okay you mentioned families what sort of worries have the families had well everything between earth and heaven you know since uh since an, when they are in open prison, we are trying to sort of coach them to the civil world and 
the day our prisoners are getting out, the, the day of freedom is quite close. So the problems are sort of like the normal everyday problems. Yeah. So in normal times, would open prisoners be able to go to jobs during the day? Yeah, yeah. And actually, we, those who are sort of like working in the community or in the city, they, they still do. So we didn't, we didn't uh, end the, those permits since obviously they might be, you know, a crucial part of some business or whatever. So they are still going to the work normally. Oh. So if they're allowed to work in the community, open prisoners are also allowed to go to work in the community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. Um, it's been a challenge for, uh, for prison services all around the world, and I just wondered if you had a view about what the biggest challenge for the uh, fin Finnish prison service has been during COVID. Well, this is my personal opinion but like i think the main issue has been for our whole organization is how to keep people safe and healthy obviously because the prisons are small societies and uh, if the virus ends up in a prison it is quite likely that everyone will get it and then would be then we would be in a big trouble but what is good that we haven't had any any major outbreaks of the virus in any of our prisons currently so we have dealt that situation quite good yeah but that that is something that affects uh, every decisions every decision we are making that whether will this decision help to keep the virus out so that's been like the number one priority the, yeah. the other thing that you mentioned earlier was that clearly they got new technology out to you uh, very early and they saw technology as being a big help to you? Yeah, yeah. Because there, there are, you know, the meetings, there is like so many meetings we have to have and uh, the system wouldn't work, wouldn't work if we weren't able to discuss with the you know, the, our superior superiors and so on. And uh, in, in, in the Finnish uh, criminal sanctions agency, the, the whole technological leap is, is, you know, going forward and forward. We are having this, I don't know what's the right word, but like smart prisons, which will have different kind of technology to prisoners to use and so on so we are we are reaching for the future i think so in a way uh, covid has moved you quicker into that future yeah yeah I, I think it has i hope that we will stay on this path after the covid okay so in a way uh, covid has accelerated progress uh, and one of the things I was also wondering is, has any of ordinary prison officer practice changed as a result of COVID? Mm, I can't really think it has since, as I said, that in a way that job's the same, even though you use mask or even though if you meet prisoners via, you know, Skype or something, it's still still the same same thing you're doing with them. So the basic relationship and getting knowledge about the person that you are key worker to, that stays the the key component of being a good prison officer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I think. And do you think prison will go back to the way it was, or do you think it's gonna move forward? That's an interesting thing to see whether we will, because nowadays we have, you know, all sort of uh, education and so on via Skype. 
but when the situation goes back to normal, it might be that there we are in the class classroom once again and meeting with each other. I don't know. Let's see. Well, we're all going to be watching to see what, <laughs> what the new normal is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, that's been really interesting. But what I want to do is to ask you to reflect a bit as a, as a person, not just as somebody who uh, has, a, has a job. Because um, I'd like to ask how you escape uh, from prison pressures. What, what, how do you escape from being a, a, a prison officer? Well, I don't have to escape it really. <laughs> like, oh. I, mm, I don't, I don't feel the pressure that much. And uh, I, I like my job quite a lot. I like to discuss it and so on. But of course, one needs something to get his head, you know, straight. So. What I like to do is, you know, sports, gym, this Finnish, Finnish, well, Scandinavian sport called floorball that I play a lot. And uh, what's that, what's, what sport is that like? I don't think I've heard of that. No, you probably haven't. Well, it's like an uh, indoor, indoor ice hockey, you could say, without skates, with plastic ball and so on. Okay. So it's got to be indoor um, because of the climate. Um, yeah. Is it is it fast and violent? It's fast, but it's not violent. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> but you, you don't you don't go down ski jumps and float in the air for. No, um, I, no, I'm 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 worse at skiing, so I'll try. I'm I'm trying to avoid everything that is with skiing. Okay, so you you avoid breaking legs. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Now, has anything because COVID nineteen has been a very weird time for all of us. Has anything made you rethink your approach to work during this weird year? Uh, you know, every every now and then you read or see someone acting in a way that that then you think that uh, this this guy is or or a girl is doing something like really well that that's something i should be doing mm. obviously but but unfortunately quite often it is that the, the work itself is like putting out fires that you don't really have that much time to you know educate yourself or or you know learning some uh, uh, learning a new way to do something so but yeah you, you i often see something that uh, that's what i should be doing but then when you're faced with the reality when you're just coping and surviving with the workload then then it's quite hard often and certainly the pressures of every day quite often don't give you the chance to take a step back and, and reflect. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so in a way, I just, well, you just keep on doing some, something that sort of comes in natural. And, uh, and I think that that is often in my own, you know, way of working, that is the best, best option. Okay. Have you started doing anything new in the last year because social life has been so constrained? Maybe playing playing more video games. Okay. Which isn't necessarily just a good thing, but yeah. It's a different sort of sport. It'll be in the Olympics mm -hmm. next. So yeah. um, perhaps you need to get in training so you can represent Finland. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things I've said to people when I've interviewed them is that I ask all the questions, so it's only fair that you have a chance to ask me a question. Uh, I would like to know how the, you know, the whole coronavirus thing has affected the line of your line of work. Like, okay. what are the differences? Right. Well, um, 
I used to be able to, I used to fly a lot. So I used to do a, a lot of um, consultancy working with foreign governments, Mika. And um, uh, my wife is quite pleased about this, I have to say, because um, uh, I used to mean I was abroad a lot. And that, for some reason, just stopped instantly. <laughs> so the biggest change in my life is that I'm not flying. Um, and instead, I'm doing loads of uh, international things online. And saving yeah. all that time in airports and yeah. uh, being much greener. So I think, just like you said, that how, how um, life is changing onto the internet, uh, I think that's the biggest single change. And I'm having to think how um, I can integrate Zoom-type connectivity into being uh, able to influence justice issues down a wire rather than have to physically go and have meetings yeah. and, uh, uh, and, and do uh, advice work uh, without having to travel. So yeah. I think that's the biggest impact on me, on me. And I'm hoping actually that the environmental considerations will, and time considerations uh, will have a, have a change. But um, I do feel less um, free. And the thing I miss most is meeting with people. Um, yeah, yeah. You probably spotted I'm an extrovert. I like to be with people. And um, that's the thing I really miss most. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, be able to go out with friends or hug my grandchildren. I, I mean, I just can't believe it's now a year since yeah. I, hu I hugged my grandchildren. Just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, that's the thing I miss most. Um, I'm, we're drawing to a conclusion now, um, and I'm just wanting to ask, I guess, um, two things, really. Um, do you think anything about lockdown has changed you as a person? <sighs> Good question. Maybe I'll see that in, in a few years, what happened, you mm. know, when you check yourself in rest, retrospect. But um, I wouldn't say, as, as I told you, you know, in a way, my hobbies have stayed the same. My family issues have stayed the same. The work is the same. So maybe, maybe I am better at... Uh, enjoying the little things when you have you know this big international you know ruckus happening and then you don't you know you don't bother that much by little things i can see that and uh, the last thing i want to ask you is if have you got any covid19 advice for your prison colleagues around the world Hang in there. Hang in there. I think that's really good advice. <laughs> and uh, because uh, COVID-19 is affecting us in prisons all around the world, people are having a tough time. And um, thanks very much indeed for, for sharing your experience. It's been fascinating. And um, we're going to sign off now. And we're going, I want to say thank you for... Uh, for being here and to thank our listeners too. I hope that you will stay safe and that you'll be able to join us next time when we uh, interview a different criminal justice practitioner. Uh, good Mika, and thank you very, very much. Uh, and to remind our listeners that our podcasts from INCJ are available on your normal provider on iTunes or Google under INCJ Podcasts. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for listening. Thank you. You have been listening to the INCJ podcast, Conversations about International Criminal Justice. To find out more, go to our website at criminaljusticenetwork.net. 
or follow us on Twitter at INTCJ Network. <laughs>